lovelies and welcome to an epic build tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at how to create different levels. I'm going to start off with a simple bridge so we can get a basic concept of how to do it and how it works as well. And then we'll go on to something a little bit more complicated. But once we've got this uh, basic idea in our heads, it, it all just flows easily. And as much as it looks daunting when you see the big fields and, and there's lots of different layers, it really isn't. And I hope you guys really give this a try because I want your builds to be awesome and epic. And I want you all to just enjoy building, to be honest. Okay, so we are going to start by, obviously, making a room. Doesn't matter what size room you have, if you do want to make a build with a bridge, just to start with, you know the location of where you want it to be. This is because if you then move it, once you've created it, it will sink straight back down to the first floor. Start off with a, a room, whether it's square, circle, whatever you want, it doesn't matter. I've just stuck with a, a very simple one. It doesn't matter how big or small it is, I'm basically just going to copy it onto the top very simple and then we move back down to the first room and we delete it nice and simple so we've got the second floor this bit here it is the second floor so if we go down to the first floor we cannot see it and then if we come back up it is the second floor still and that's how we see it and if we're making a bridge you will be able to see the platform of the bridge on the second floor but not when you're on the first floor okay so we just deleted the walls and from here we can move up and down very simply I mean if we go all the way down obviously that's then going to count as the second floor still so if you want to bury it a little bit I'm not entirely sure why you would because we built it on the second floor it will always stay a part of the second floor. It won't move on to the first floor. The only thing that does that is then if we try to move and click over here. But if you do decide that you want to move the location, it is possible. It's just best off to do it slowly. So we've got the grid around the outside. So we can move it, but it, it's very casual, sort of slow going and basically you you move off the grid but you stay so your your room is still on that second floor grid and in the room that was originally there and this then allows us to move it there is another way of moving it and i just failed that time of course i did that we can if if you've got the space i mean if you've got other things around it on the second floor this will not work but if you've got the space you can literally just make it bigger and make it smaller and it, it will move into the, the corner and the area that you want it to go to. So as for a bridge, I mean the only difference here is we need to get rid of the ceiling. Is if we move it down, we can then add on our stairs for our bridge. And as this floor is, like I've said, is the second floor, from here, we can add our water. Now, we cannot go over the stairs. We can go under them a little bit if we remove the, the parts that are holding it up. And there we go, we go underneath. And that is basically because the game registers this part of the bridge, the bridge floor is registered as the second floor. And we can go down even further. I've got that basic concept of what exactly it is and how it works and it's all just to do with what level it is registered at. So from here, if we move on to some more levels now in order to do multi levels on a first floor or a second floor it doesn't matter which floor you're thinking about I'm gonna stick right on the ground for now so let's say we wanted this room to be a little bit higher and this one to be lower now as long as we keep 
one squared gap in between, we can add another room and it won't be counted as connecting to the other one. Therefore, we can make it higher or we can make it as low as we like and there is nothing that changes. However, if we add the rims together, which we cannot at the moment, they need to be the same level to do this. We then obviously we can't, they will go up and down as one. So when we are thinking about building these types of levels, the key thing to remember is you need space for your stairs. Now, it really does only need one square in between it. However, you obviously need somewhere for the stairs to connect. So if you want a small room, you still need to remember you need some space on either side, that did not work, to connect our stairs. You can do this in many different designs. It really doesn't matter what you do with your actual build from here. As long as you've got that space and thought about the stairs, there is absolutely no problem at all. So this one, it fits quite nicely here, but there are some heights where, where the stairs don't connect. So if we move this up, we've got to a point where it's going to delete the stairs. And so if we try to pull it on, the, the level is too steep and it comes up with saying that the stairs must connect to a floor. Obviously, that is a floor. I'm not completely crazy. I don't think I am. I could well be. I, I honestly would not deny it at all. So there is a limit on how higher or lower you can go. But as long as we have that gap in between, we can go crazy with as many levels as we like. So I'm going to quickly get rid of the walls here, just to try and tidy it up a bit. So from here, if we then had, let's make this room a little bit bigger. So if we wanted to then add another floor, but had a, a sort of floating effect to it. Now from here, it can be a little bit more difficult depending on what exactly you're wanting but it's, it still sticks with that basic concept. So we start with building the next floor, which there we have the bottom and it also counts as the third floor. Now the ceilings always appear when we make the, uh, the rooms and I always forget to delete them until I see them when I go up a level. So we've got this, we've got our first floor and we've got our second floor. And as you can see, the second floor is different on each one where the level is on the grid. But from here, we have to then make a third floor to then be able to move it up and down. So we've created that and then we do the same as we did before. We remove that block from underneath, preferably without taking the rest out. So we will start by removing the wall. And then from here, this is counted as the second floor still. So we can move up and down. But as you see, because it's the second floor and not the third floor, we then take off the uh, foundation with it because we have the, the ground floor and then we also have the second floor. But technically these ones are connected. So we always have to have an empty level in between each one, which then gives us that space to move. So in able to do this, we then unfortunately we have to add another one. So now we've got floor on the, on the third floor. <laughs> so then we take away this one on the second floor. And that then gives us the mobility to move. However, as you see, when we get down to the second floor, we have a little bit of trouble with it going over. So we have the mobility of going up and we can go down to a certain degree, but because we are still hanging over this area here, unfortunately, we cannot actually have the mobility of the second floor.
we really do just stick with the same basic concept. So from here, if we move it across, yeah, if it will let me, There we go. So as we can see, there should, if I've done it correctly, now be space in between. And then we actually have full range of all of the floors. This floor will always be counted as the third floor. So if I go down on the floor, onto the second floor, we then end up with this where we can't see that even though it's really low to the ground. And the same with the ground floor. So we then have this movement where we don't have a connecting space to it. And we can add our stairs again. And then that gives us another level up. So as all of this is still counting as the second floor, I believe. Just double check here. So that's our first floor, well, ground floor, first floor, second. And now we have all of these different levels. Now from here, we can add onto this one and give ourselves like a space in between and we can decorate that with fences or anything else we like. However, from here, we can add onto this one as well. And as long as we have that gap in between, because we cannot go from one level on the grid onto another, so we need a gap again, it purely won't let us jump from one level to another, but it also gives us this look where we've got a constant split level. There is a downside to this, that I've, you cannot have your stairs on the inside, your stairs are always going to be outside of the building itself. But that gives us an opportunity to make a balcony and other extra things that we might like, and with that it's, it's also a lot more simple than you might expect as long as you don't breach over the two different levels of the grid. You will just add some stairs, preferably that way. And sometimes when we get to the stairs, it depends what level we put it on. I have noticed this that if you're always going from the top level to the bottom it can be a little bit complicated and it won't necessarily find the level it wants to go on or you want it to go on but doing it from the bottom level up even if you are doing a second floor to a third floor and you cannot see it that does connect a lot easier So in regards to the balcony, I'll quickly make a split here so we're not going over anywhere else. We can go as far as we like as long as we stay on this level. We can create even more on this level. So as long as we keep that boundary between all levels of the one square, so we from here We've got the, the one square here, and as you can see, even recognised in the grid. So we could always split it here again, just purely for making the floor and bring it this way. And we can add extra stairs here. We can then go from this level onto the one we just created. Oh, put that there for a second because I forgot to remove that. So there we go. So then we can come from this one up as well. And then we sort of connected in several different ways. So before I complicate this too much, we're gonna take it back down to something a little bit more basic. Now, as I was saying about the second and third floor, etc., and the stairs, I will demonstrate this now we're going to make another floor as we've made all of the others I'm gonna bring it out a little bit and then we're just gonna make sure we have that gap in between 
Well, that was the wrong floor, obviously. So now this is on the same floor, but if we get rid of the bottom part, we have to make sure we put a wall or something on this one, otherwise it will be deleted with the rest of the other room. So then we've got this here. And as you can see, we're currently on a different floor. If we come down to the third floor and we try and put our stairs in, it works. Of course it works, but sometimes this can be troubling. It depends on how far you lift it up straight away because we have that gap in between that is the, the perfect room height. We have no trouble whatsoever. And we can even have the stairs so they come down lower. And as you see, this is what happens here. We've got the stairs, they're not quite happy to connect. They do. And if we go down a floor, so we go onto this one, as you can see, we actually cannot see the stairs at all. And if we come back up, that should be connected still anyway. So if we move this all the way up. Okay, we want to move it up beyond that point. And we can get this problem sometimes where we're too far up, if that's what you would like to have, and have your stairs sort of connect on the same level but go up to different ones. I mean, that's, that's quite an awesome idea and just to have loads of stairs converging in one place and then all leading somewhere separate. So there's, there's lots of things we can do with the stairs. So this is our third floor. And from here, I'm going to add another one. So this is our fourth floor. And we can see one, two, three, quite a few different levels. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to get to that if we go up enough, we get to where we are on the roof and you cannot do any more levels. However, you can use this as an extra level if I we just have to remember the restrictions of roofs and we cannot use the full walls so we can use fencing and we can also use the half walls as well and if we remember that we can add this as another level but in regards to it if you're happy to have a flat roof or area then that's great if you want to build on it you can, you can build in it, but then we have to consider that the roofing is not a possibility to be higher than this. And unfortunately, we cannot lift it up using the BB move objects. I mean, that would be awesome if we could just lift it up. But unfortunately, we cannot. There are other options as we've got the shades as well in the build and buy mode. So we can always use them as well. So when we do get this far up, it is possible to use this and we can change it as we please with the levels as well as long as it's not overlapping and again if it's overlapping there, there are those restrictions in place as well so um, something else that we're going to sort of move on from the bridge this is just a little extra we're keeping to the very same basic concept. From here we can even add a bridge that goes higher up. So if we want a bridge on a third, fourth floor, go ahead. It's amazing, I love doing it. It just sticks to the wall of having at least one block on either side of the of the wall. Uh, another thing to keep an eye out when you are doing these, if you want to have the same levels, if you have a look, we've got a little line that comes up. 
And when we have that line, the white one that is on the other blocks that I'm not currently holding, that tells us that the level we are at is at the same level as this field. So if I then come up here and I decide I want to make this one higher, if you keep an eye on the one I just moved, when we get to the same height, we get this and we get a nice little thing that says, yeah, you'll be able to connect these. So that's that's a nice little indicator to remember if you do want something the same height, we can do that. So from here, again, with building the bridge, we need to come down to the first floor. Make sure we've got that gap in between. We're just going to build our basic room as we've already done. We're not going to do that. We are going to copy it. And then we come up onto the first floor. And then at this point we can move it up and down. And so we can also move it all the way up and then we can use it as a bridge connecting both of these floors. And you can do this whether the floors are at the same height or not. So if I add that one and make it a little bit longer, that should be a, a big enough gap for the stairs. No, it's not. So we've got smaller stairs on that side and then if we copy on this side it's it's going to be a bigger set of stairs and we can make it so we have like the tiniest amount of stairs on this side and have a bigger one on the opposite side thank you so much guys i really hope this helps i just love the idea of helping you all do your amazing builds and leave feedback i really would appreciate it especially if this has helped you i'd love pictures and thank you guys, please just stay awesome and I will see you soon.